Um, hey, hi, hello. My name is Michael Sun, editor in chief at Tapas Media. Uh, I'll be moderating today's panel, which is developing anime and manga in the West, expanding web comics into TVS and more. Uh, and for those who are new to Tapas, you can find us at tapas.io. We're an open publishing platform for web of comic novels, home to over 54,000 creators and 76,000 stories. And by taking even just a cursory glance at the website or mobile apps, you'll notice that so many of our stories are heavily influenced uh, by anime and manga. Uh, tell stories that you can't find anywhere else. And in order to do that, we have to not only empower our voices, but also create pathways of success for those stories and creators to really thrive. Um, to date, we've adapted the work produced into audiobooks, podcasts, traditional publishing um, books, uh, and are currently exploring live action and animation, uh, which brings me to this excellent and phenomenally talented cast of creators that are joining me today, whom I've had the immense pleasure and honor of working with throughout my tenure at Tapas. Uh, so, so panelists, if you could state your name, your art handle, if that's applicable, your series or notable works, and also for a bit of fun or manga that would be pretty cool and for me i'll start counter clock so we'll start with brie okay. um so my name is brie indigo or at least that's my pen name some of my favorite animes are uh dated because i haven't had to watch as much as i want with, with stuff. so uh Mush mushishi fruits basket and then some more niche titles like city sama tiger and bunny and uh, kaiba um Currently, I'm working on a few graphic novels, um, but I think we'll talk about um, future projects later. Um, now I'm working on Jamie on Tapas, though, um, mostly. And uh, yeah, you can see my work on Twitter, Instagram, anywhere, really. But, yeah, cool. so. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Daniel. Hi, uh, I'm Daniel Dominguez. Uh, I write for television and feature. Um, I've done a bunch of stuff. Um, a lot of a lot of animation space stuff. I've written on SpongeBob SquarePants, Captain Underpants, uh, and the rest of the stuff doesn't have pants in the title. Um, the I did uh, I uh, developed along with uh, Alvaro uh, Rodriguez and Brad Graber, uh, who's the CEO of Paris Animation, a show called Seis Manos, um, which came out on Netflix last year, which is a, a super hardcore anime influenced kung fu horror badass thing, <laughs> which I really like. Uh, I just finished running a room for HBO Max for a adult R rated um, sci fi action show. Um, that I can't say the name of yet, but there's a bunch of cool, fun stars in it, and it's also very anime. It's like Ghost in the Shelly. Uh, so kind of Ghost in the Shell, Evangelion are two big influences on that show. My favorite, uh, super basic bitch, so it's Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, because uh, <laughs> it's Brotherhood specifically, so I have a specific on it. Um, it's just, it just does everything so well. It's such a bouillabaisse of different tropes and ideas and like whips from comedy, like the high, the silliest comedy, the darkest horror with such instantaneous glee. Uh, it's very effective and I love it. Very cool. All right, Khan, can you introduce yourself? Okay, I'm Khan. Um, my handle on pretty much any social media site is uh, Dempasse. Um, my works, I'm um, Ultramarine Weather. I did Happiness Theory. So working on Radio Wave Communication. Um, my favorite anime is One Piece, so I don't think you can get more basic than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it requires a lot of dedication, but it's still my favorite. Um, and my favorite manga right now is Dungeon Meshi, mm -hmm. which I highly recommend to anyone who likes RP or cooking. Perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, I just got into that one actually. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's I love dungeon, it. dungeon, right, or something like that. When it's translated. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the the English. Yeah. 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 Um, Cow, can you introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, my full name is uh, Vincent Cow, but I go by the Cow on most of my social media, and uh, I'm creator of Magical Boy. 
a fantasy LGBT story and a slice of life called Mondo Mango. Um, my favorite manga at the moment, and still is, is One Punch Man, mainly because I'm a really big fan of the artist. And anime, I can't really choose one. And on top of Naruto, Hunter x Hunter, uh, Beastar is a recent one, but I like Your Name. That's my favorite anime movie. <laughs> The moment or the last airbender in anime? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, so, now that we have, uh, I kind of wanted to go into each of your uh, experiences and also how anime and manga has influenced your work. Uh, we'll start off with Daniel. Uh, having just come off of working on an anime, I'd be most curious to hear about your experiences growing up anime and manga and how it's played a role in your work in Seis Manos in particular. Uh, you've really like recapitulated modern anime with not only Mexican cultural martial arts um, and a whole ton of like mm -hmm. ultra violence. Uh, I mean, how you're able to work on and develop something that has such a strong anime influence, but is really unlike anything that's been produced before. Mm -hmm. and, and also, is there an appetite out there from mainstream buyers uh, for more anime produced in the West? Well, I'll answer that question first. The answer is very much yes. <laughs> and I can go in some specifics without getting too uh, non nda -E, uh, if you if you want. But like, I can back into the yeah. other part of the question, which is like, I feel like as a, as a, as a writer, like I grew up in the United States, I'm, I'm half Mexican, half Irish. Uh, Mexican because I couldn't hang out with the Irish side of my family because my well, Irish grandparents are racist against my Mexican grandparents. So no. hang with them. Um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but anyway, on the on the anime tip, like I don't feel like I can out anime. Anime is this incredible uh, art form that we all sort of like are grateful for. But what I can do, I think, is take the writing that comes authentic to me and the stories that come from me, and I think take that and like put it into into this sort of like tones and styles of aesthetic that really excite me which a lot of that comes from anime and like I, I would say I came to, to anime a little bit later than a lot of people uh, my first experience was when I was eight, 18 actually uh, in a meaningful way um I was always a big fan of genre like I grew up at, uh, it, to just be a super nerd with like horror sci-fi and fantasy um and I always was kind of like neutral on cartoons other than the Simpsons because I just thought cartoons were like Beauty and the Beast or whatever and I was like screw that shit and then uh just not for me <laughs> Uh, but then, when I was 18, in a very uh, amusingly but too X-rated uh, to tell in this uh, forum story, I had a, a, a really great night that ended with watching Ninja Scroll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and sort of, it, you, looking at it through the lens now, there's a lot of, like, I think, sort of, like, let's say, uh, problems with the uh, with the thing in terms of like how it in sexuality but seeing it as a 17 year old and just seeing the like grit and the like it, it, thoughtfulness and interesting the way and with so much interesting and dope shit in that like that old dude like shooting bees <laughs> out of his back and attack and like it just blew my mind that like this is what animation could be and I just, it, it caused me to dive in. And um, so I watched a bunch, obviously, all the ones like uh, Perfect Blue and Akira. And so they had a lot on the feature side. And, um, and then I came across Ghost in the Shell. And I was like, oh, well, that's the thing that I, this, that's where I really live. Um, is like when I, it, the, the reason I got so attached to it, I think, in part was, oh, you can do anything in a way that you couldn't do at that time in the United States with animation in terms of storytelling. But Ghost of Shells and so intelligent and so thoughtful and it it made me it made me real it just made me want to do that specifically. And that I just fell completely down the rabbit hole with that. And so when I would happily managed to have a successful career writing for a TV and feature like I wanted to be in animation specifically because I wanted to do that, but still like I got in uh, my first job at 2011 um, in television. And like at that time you still in the United States couldn't do any essentially Simpsons or family guy iterations like for the, and then the kids space and kids space stuff. Like you couldn't do adult genre storytelling. And so happily I started 
selling stuff pretty quickly, my own original ideas. And so I was like, screw this. I'm going to write something that I really want to write. And so I wrote a love letter to my favorite sci-fi uh, anime stuff um, that I would take around. It was like the one thing I couldn't sell. They'd be like, oh, it's dope, but we're in the United States, so we're not going to do it. <laughs> and then they'd buy some other thing. I was like, all right, fine. Um, and then Castlevania came out. And uh, all of a sudden, like, and it was humongous success, right? And it was like an anime, it's such an, uh, like a, such a love letter to the genre, but with Western, a Western storytelling, Western storytelling. And so then I get a call from Netflix and they're like, hey, remember that thing you showed us that once? Hey, mate, can we look at that again? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And so I went, they built out this entire department and they're like, oh, we're going to do stuff like this. And um, we ended up tabling that one, but I, I met, folks at Paris Animation who had done Castlevania along with Federator and Brad and they had this wonderful thing Seis Manos um, that Netflix was looking at again because of the success of Castlevania came in helped them flesh it out more we sold it and then since in that time period to answer your question like things have been opening up like you'll just like every article that's like coming out in the last six months is just the adult genre quote unquote is like the animation is like the big thing that's happening right now in the States, mm -hmm. as far as animation goes. And anime is the lens through which that is happening. Yeah. Anime and novels. And so like, in the period since we first put out the, the first season of Seis Manos, uh, which I absolutely love, and I hope, you know, I hope everyone who watches it loves it too, feel free to not love it. Sorry, it's subjective, baby, but like, oh, everyone is interested now. Like, yeah. I, we're going, I, there's, uh, I can't tell you a door that's not open to that's this cool. stuff. I guess uh, the transition is pretty nicely to, to Khan, who is also working with Powerhouse to a certain capacity. Uh, so Khan, you know, I've been a huge fan of yours ever since you first started publishing with us. Thank um, you. With Happiness Theory. I still brag about getting a shout out at the end of volume one, the physical <laughs> version. Um, but I wanted to know how manga and anime has influenced you and your work. I mean, out of of all of us, I think you posted, you post the most fan art on your social media and you really built a strong following around fandoms. Uh, so if you talk a little bit about, you know, so about how to build an audience around fandom. Well, I grew up with like Disney and stuff, but I also thought like cartoons were like until Pokemon and Sailor Moon came out. I was probably like, oh, I don't know, 11, 12. Well, some, um, and that's when I was like, oh, like they can be longer and they can have like involved plots. And then I read um, Akira in freshman year of high school. And I was like, whoa, like comics can be anime, but they can be really serious too and really detailed because his backgrounds are just intense. Um, Ever since uh, Akira, I've been just taking bits and pieces of my favorite styles and smushing them together. And anytime I draw fan art for uh, anything, it's like you sort of absorb osmosis, a little bit of that style. I mean, you keep your style in the fan art, but you still take in a little bit of that style. So I think in Ultramarine, my style has changed like four times <laughs> since the beginning, just just from like which fandoms I hop between. Um, but I don't really like try to collect a following based on fandoms. You just draw what I like. And for me, the biggest compliment something I like is to draw it. Like, um, to show that I love something, I want to draw it and put my time and invest into it. So I just draw fan art of the things, fans who also share that love it. And it just clicks from there. That's why I like fan art. Um, yeah. It's like a downtime to your original works, yeah. like when you want to take, cause my, my, um, it's bad. I really need to find another hobby, but like my hobby outside of work, which is my work is drawing, my hobby is drawing. So there's no like, <laughs> but instead of drawing original stuff for my hobby, I draw fan art. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I think it's so fascinating. Like both of you have referenced Akira, which are, you know, very cerebral works. Um, and 
both of you had kind of referenced growing up and loving anime and manga and wanting to be part of like that conversation and now the two of you are creating works that are part of the conversation which i think is it's really rad Moving on to to brie you know we've we've collaborated in the past you know we worked together on meg joe beth and amy which was an adaptation of little women published through um Little Brown, uh, I, I think what really drew a lot of publishers to working with you is your unique art style. Um, and can you talk a little bit about your and how you developed that that unique art style? So I guess I'll just kind of start with uh, the beginning. Uh, I, I I didn't really. Um, can you talk a little bit closer to the microphone? I think you're breaking up a little bit. Yeah, and I'm also doing this. <laughs> but uh, so what I found uh, inspiration was those um, Foster's Hope for Imaginary Friends, all those goodies from uh, um, And that kind of kept propelling me as an artist on top of my mother and my grandmother and all like this. Like, wow, look, she like uh, emulated Paco Fills perfectly. She's so talented. And then, um, and then, like, when I got into middle school, uh, I was just drawing kind of for fun until I met one of my best friends. Uh, so we went through me helping Naruto and all these wild things. They probably weren't the series I would pick up on my own, especially since I didn't want to be what I for. But that really, really um, just, like, shifted everything from fun to, oh, I can actually seriously tell a story with, with a drawing. And um, that led us to make all like like stories. Like we had one called like Black Rose Yankees, which was just a girl gang that just beat up vampires. And characters for Naruto, which is exactly where Jamie came came from. Us. And um, and then that just kind of moved over to high school, where I started making commissions for the and uh, using all my love for uh, the series that I grew up on, as well as all the artists on the scene and stuff, uh, and developing a style slowly as I went. So even if I found a lot of love in series that already existed, I feel like my all of my uh, growth in style came from my contemporaries. Without them, I really don't think that I was attempting to grow my own. So just like um, Khan said, as you are introduced to uh, kind of the things that re like, like um, really, that really appeal to you, kind of stick, and then that becomes Frankenstein art style. Mm -hmm. So uh, even and even outside of art in general, like what you would draw or anything. Um, after I got out of college, I would and find things I like, like the way that clothes move off of somebody and just go, wow, I really like that line works. I want to apply that that to my art or, or doing visual. Uh, so I have to say that like my style has been developed with experience in life because everyone lives life experiences a lot of the same things but what we take from it is very unique and how we perceive that is very unique and then how we replicate it yeah for sure <laughs> I, I don't even I know if that does. answered the question um, <laughs> and, and finally uh to the cow um magical boy uh i think for most people tuning into anime expo they have familiarity with the magical girl like trope or genre You've done this really amazing job at taking such a like celebrated trope genre in anime manga and really added like not only like a modern stability but also like looking at it through like a very western plan. Um, can you talk about how you approach developing Magical Boy as a web comic and what, what fired that story? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, with the 90s and early 2000s, you know, uh, card capture Sakura, Sakura, and 
Dragon Ball Z. And I kind of like wish those I like what people expect women to be and against how strong men have to be. And so those stereotypes I wanted to break down. And so it all like comes down to like want more representation for the day. Like I didn't want a simple slice of life story it just happens to have a trans character. Like I wanted an action packed story with a trans identified hero. So like I want people to see the struggles of someone who identifies and at the same time be captivated by a fantasy flair that keeps and guessing in the story. So I went with that magical girl genre because like that was the perfect, as I mentioned before, like the perfect representation of the opportunity to explore like how the main character will overcome that obstacle and fight their way to become the truest self. So like I want I'm hoping with this comic to inspire some readers to give them hope that they too can fight seemingly hopeless and in, intense dysphoric situations. And then that's how I came to Magical Boy. I guess just sticking with you, um, this hasn't been announced yet, but you and Tapas, I was right if I say me for some reason, uh, developing Magical Boy uh, for television. Uh, you had some specific requests about staffing the show. Uh, could you talk a bit about that and why that's so important to you? Yeah, um, because like I want it to be representation of like the trans community. Like I want to give them an opportunity to have their voice heard and like give them the chance to be in this, you know, TV ad- adaptation. Yeah. Like either through voice or acting, whatever comes. Yeah, for sure. I think it's really rad. Um, okay, and Con. Um, I mentioned this previously, but you know, both of you grew up with it as like a source of inspiration. How did it feel to work together on adapting happiness theory into animation? Just like from being inspired to becoming creators who will undoubtedly inspire a new generation of creators with your collaboration. I mean, I, it, it is so, <laughs> like, uh, quite, I don't, I don't know how to say this, but like, I really like, I, basically my goal at this point in, in, in um, both writing that I do and writing that I shepherd is, uh, is, is pretty much just making crowd boys angry. <laughs> that's like, all I, that's what gives me pleasure in life. No, like I don't know. I think I, it, I I say that semi facetiously, but like there's something so joyful about like finding stuff like happiness there, which is so really intelligent, intelligent, and through a lens you don't see very often, and like a style and aesthetic and tone that on that when I say not very often, I mean on television, right? Like th- that just like should be there and just is is and you can just feel so many people waiting to in that format um and to see and to just come across thing and to, to work with you guys and see this thing that just like is just pre-built so beautifully uh like it's just it's just <laughs> it just effortlessly flows into that new space from like one version of itself into another i mean I, when Say Simone came out and like people were like, we'd go to Comic Con and people were lining up and just being like, I've never seen myself on screen in the th- in the the genre that I love. You know, like I grew up on this stuff and it was never me. And like they'd be crying, and like I can't tell you how that feels emotionally. And I can close my eyes in happiness theory where like you're gonna see the television version sorry there's a there's a street cleaning pool going by my house <laughs> one second uh, um but like i i see this at comic-con and just seeing people lined up going like my story in the in the version i love like i love animation and now to see like myself reflected in this way and the like, struggles and experiences that i've gone through yeah. like i know like I, i'm going to be standing in the background of that with the wonderful 
know, with the leader and the wonderful creator who's helping adapt it for television and just sort of watching that. And I'm going to just fucking weep, openly weep at the beginning of that moment. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, me, it's mind blowing. Uh, I probably like anybody who started out drawing comics in middle school, uh, always had that like 12 year old fantasy it's animated <laughs> but it was always just like a fantasy where you listen to a song on the bus to school and you just sort of imagine your characters being in an anime um it was sort of like something that was completely unattainable um because I couldn't find the patience to animate so I was like if I don't do it myself nobody's gonna do it um but having it like picked out and being told like this this is something that we want to see in animation. My mind just like shut down <laughs> because it, it's literally just like a dream of mine. And every day I feel like, what is this really happening? Um, and I know I've always said like, if it gets adapted into anything, I'll I'll just like cry. From I'm happy when I see it, like. I'm just gonna, just like you, I'm gonna be weeping. Just, just like, this is, this is this real? Somebody please pinch me. Like, this is, this can't be my reality right now. Um, I do think, I've had people tell me in the comic version, gone through um, what Camille has gone through. Um, they've told me, like, you captured the feeling of divorce. So, in a way, I wish I had the words for when I was going through it, and that means a lot to me because uh, they saw themselves in something that I made, and and anytime I make a comic, I want to have at least one character that somebody can identify with and find themselves either in a trait or a, a weakness or strength of that character. I can feel connected more connected to the story and the character. So to hear that really meant a lot and to to know that that's going, going to, it means a lot to me. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's it's a ubiquitous reality. Like my parents got to, when I was a kid and uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, you know, I plan to really common, you know, (laughs) I look forward to to my divorce at some point. It's just pretty, oh God, half the population it's out there. And like that, that's, that conversation doesn't exist as a television show in the animated space. And like, yeah, to be, and it should. And there's like, it's, it's just like, it's, it's, it's a, it's a story. So many people, you know, art, there's so there's so few reasons to actually do art, and one of them is to be able to show people. There there are so many people out there who can empathize with their struggle and have been through that as well, and that's just like such a beautiful reason to make something exist. So, yeah, and it's the help in that way. Yeah, it's going to be you. interesting to see how this comes out. I mean. From Stace Monos to SpongeBob, you know, you working on Happiness Theory is going to be quite, I think. Like, <laughs> are you going to get the ultra violence getting injected into Happiness Theory, or are you going to get more of your comedic side? <laughs> well, my, my <laughs> note, <laughs> as, as someone who's standing in the back and being a uh, glorified notes boy, most of my notes are around bring stuff, bring out, bring out even more the thing you're already doing. If I ever forgive what this needs is like really bloody killing <laughs> just um i guess uh we have a little bit of time left um, so i'd like to talk a little bit about uh do you have uh any advice for prospective creators out there that have aspirations to be part of this conversation or what are what's some advice that you wish someone would have told to you um, before taking this journey, and we'll start with uh, Bree. Um, honestly, uh, just in general, I, I guess like since my mind's already on like style and like and, and are today, like just keep making tomorrow easier for future you. 
I guess, is the simplest way I can put it. Because today it's so easy to just say, I'll do it tomorrow or, or but if, as long as you do something today to make it easier for tomorrow's you to continue that, then you will find success. It's just, it might not always be exactly where I wanted to be in animation, but similar to Kana, I was like, if I don't do it, no one is, and I definitely can do it on my own. So it had to be comics because it was kind of like, it's kind of a storyboard. <laughs> um, but it led, I could not, if it wasn't for my friend introducing art more seriously, I wouldn't have started my comic, I wouldn't have been available on top of I wouldn't have had an opportunity with my goal. To do my so everything happens for a reason as long as you put your effort out there um, never saw myself where i am today and who knows where i'll be in another year or five or ten um, but i know i'm going to always put in the hard work and no matter where i will be i will all be further than I am. so that like advocate and if you're like like, do the work. Yeah. Do it. I guess three minutes left. So, so oh, the yeah. cow. Do you have any advice or uh, to perspective advice that you or someone would have told you to begin with? Um, mine is something that is meaningful to you. And if you don't know what that is, your first step is to figure that out, which might mean looking deep into you, within yourself to find that out. And if you get stuck, breathe, take a break, and do it again, try again, because failing is not the end, it's the beginning, and so just keep at it. That's cool. I like that. Um, Khan, do you have any advice or stuff to add on to this? Yes, I was definitely <laughs> one of those um, artists who grew up with teachers constantly telling me that uh, anime and manga were not art. So do not listen to those teachers because they are absolutely art and they are absolutely a form of comics, no matter what anybody says. Um, and just like the, like the cow said, just make the stories that you want to see and other people will flock to them because of, of just how genuine you are as you put yourself in it. Make what you want to see because there are definitely people out there who want to see what you want to see. For sure. And Daniel? Yeah, no, I, I would second that and say, uh, no matter how different you feel than anybody else, the reality is that the humanity is, is universe uh, different, whether, whether uh, some other people know that or not all the time. And there, there is an audience for you because we, we are all very much interconnected in how, how similar we are. I guarantee it. Just to say, yeah, a, pick back from some other people like I was dirt poor until I was 30 I just got fired from every job I had because I'd uh, hide my disgust at boring jobs uh, and then I got my tv job it, when I turned 30 out that was the only thing I could afford from Goodwill and uh, things are great now um, but like it takes however long it takes and practice makes perfect um uh i honestly want to I, I will say uh we are on a tapas uh conversation but quite honestly if from the perspective of selling stuff tapas is a genius platform because in hollywood intellectual property is king in terms of uh sling stuff that's what people buy because executives are they're paid to be scared of buying new stuff it's just the reality of the situation Say it's an original, but like the stars are were so aligned to make that occur. Most stuff is intellectual property. And so for it to pre-exist on a platform as wonderful as Office makes it easier for it smart. Um, so that's a real shout out to that. That's a great place and a great op um and then in general, uh as far as breaking TV and feature. We need the same. Uh, that's how you get the take it representation for the manager, and representation is how uh, you get jobs. Thanks for the shout out. Uh, and I think that that about wraps us on the editor in chief at Tapas. Thanks so much for tuning into our panel, developing anime and manga in the West. Uh, thanks to all of our amazing panelists for taking time today, sharing their creative.
journey and in with us. Uh, I hope for those tuning in that you had a good time and learned about you know, for those out there, it inspires you to pursue your own creative endeavors and hopefully maybe we'll see you share your stories on top of this. Uh, and um, yeah, hope you enjoy the rest of your virtual anime expo experience. Hey.